Hello and welcome to your lecture on the causes of World War I. Grab your student notes and use them to follow along and fill in any blanks that you missed in class. The year 1914. The world has been parceled up into colonies, mostly European, some American, a few Japanese. Japan has modernized and westernized until her military prowess has earned her the status of world power. Thanks to the Industrial Revolution, it feels like new technologies and inventions are popping up every day. And in Europe, tensions are rising. Imperialism is when a country extends its power and influence over another country through the use of force. And most countries in Europe were imperialistic. So I'd like you to imagine yourself as a country in Europe, looking with concern at a neighboring country. This country is pursuing imperialistic policies, is trying to expand her borders, build up her armies, take overseas colonies, force other countries into bad trade deals. Are you feeling nervous yet? If you don't do something soon, you might become the target of their next land grab. So, you decide you need to match your neighbor soldier for soldier, colony for colony, trade deal for trade deal. This is a race and you are not going to lose. It isn't long before your neighboring countries start to look at you with concern and build up their own armies and try to get their own colonies, their own trade deals. All across Europe, countries were preparing for war. But nobody wanted to go to war alone. Alliances are agreements between countries to help each other out and defend each other in case of war. And all across Europe, countries were forming alliances with each other. There are three main alliances that I'd like you to remember. The first is called the Triple Alliance, and it was between Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Italy. And the point of this alliance was to protect these countries, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy, against three other major powers, Britain, France, and Russia. Well, Britain, France, and Russia had their own alliance. It was called the Triple Entente, and its purpose was to protect Britain, France, and Russia against Germany and Austria, Hungary. No one was that worried about Italy. The third and final alliance doesn't have a snappy name, but it is important. It was an alliance between Russia and Serbia, Serbia being a small nation in an area of Europe called the Balkans. Remember that name, you'll hear it again later. All right, alliances seem like a pretty good thing for countries, right? It's great to have someone to have your back. However, in an 1801 speech, Thomas Jefferson warned against entangling alliances. Why would he do that? The reason is that alliances have one major disadvantage. And so to illustrate for this for you, I'm going to give you an example of a war with no alliances and a war with alliances. So let's pretend that there are two countries, Apple Land and Dog Land. Apple Land and Dogland have never really gotten along, but now things have gotten so bad that they are going to go to war. In a situation with no alliances, Apple Land and Dogland go to war. One of them wins, one of them loses. End of story. That story gets a whole lot more complicated once you add alliances. Brace yourselves. Here we go. Apple Land and Dogland have decided that their differences can no longer be resolved diplomatically. They're going to war. Apple Land has an ally, Banana Land. So she says, hey, Banana Land, I'm going to war and I want you to back me up. We have that alliance, remember? Well, Banana Land doesn't find the idea of war very appealing but she does have the alliance, so she says, okay, I'll fight with you. Meanwhile, Dogland is talking to her old ally, Elephant Land. Remember that alliance we have, Elephant Land? Dogland says, it's time for you to come fight with me. And Elephant never forgets. It's 
says elephant and land and marches off to war. So now instead of a war between two countries, Apple Land and Dogland, you now have a war between four countries, Apple Land, Banana Land versus Dogland and Elephant Land. But wait, it gets better or rather worse because Banana Land has another ally, Citrus Land. And so Banana Land turns to Citrus Land and says, hey, I'm in a tight squeeze, would you come to war with me? And Citrus Land says, yeah, I remember our alliance. I'll do it. Meanwhile, Elephant Land is over talking to Frog Land, reminding them of their alliance and asking Frog Land to hop into the fray, which Frog Land does. And so now, instead of two countries fighting, Apple Land and Dog Land, you have six. Apple Land, Banana Land, and Citrus Land on one side, and Dogland, Elephant Land, and Frogland on the other. And all of a sudden, the bigger the war gets, the more people die, the more destruction is wreaked, and the worse that whole area is going to be in after everything is done. Alliances cause countries that would not be originally involved in a conflict to get involved and that is exactly what happened during world war one alliances pulled in country after country after country until finally practically the entire continent was embroiled in war and as it's called world war one you can tell that the countries that are going to be pulled in will be even beyond the scope of the continent of europe as high as tensions were in europe they would still need a spark to ignite war. And that spark was struck in the Balkans. The Balkans is the area of Europe near the Black Sea. It's largely inhabited by a people known as the Slavs. For a long, long time, the Balkans had been under the thumb of the Ottoman Empire, but they rebelled. They won their independence. They were determined to realize their dream of a Slavic nation. And then, just as the Balkans had finally won their independence, Austria-Hungary stepped in and took over Bosnia, a Balkan nation. How do you think this made people in the Balkans feel? Not happy, that's how. Slavs across the Balkans, not just in Bosnia, hated Austria-Hungary for gobbling up Bosnia. And into this volatile and dangerous situation stepped Archduke Franz Ferdinand. And his assassination on June 28, 1914, would be the spark that would end up engulfing Europe in the flames of war. Archduke Franz Ferdinand was the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne. In other words, when the king of Austria-Hungary died, he would be next in line. Unlike many powerful men in Europe, Franz Ferdinand actually supported a Slavic state and he disliked war. He seems like a pretty unlikely target for assassination, doesn't he? Especially by somebody in the Balkans that wants a Slavic nation? Unfortunately, people in the Balkans didn't know that Franz Ferdinand supported a Slavic state. They didn't know that he disliked war. What they knew was that he was heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne and they hated Austria-Hungary. So it was that when Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophia arrived in Sarajevo, Bosnia for a visit, there were assassins waiting for them. The assassins' first attempt failed, but the second did not. Gavrilo Princip, a member of the Serbian terrorist group, the Black Hand, shot and killed both Franz Ferdinand and Sophia. He later said that he didn't actually want to kill Sophia, but she was in the way. The effects of Franz Ferdinand's death rippled across Europe. The group that had killed him, the Black Hand, had been a Serbian terrorist group. Austria-Hungary decides to go to war with Serbia. But who's allied with Serbia? Do you remember? If you answered Russia, you answered right. Russia comes to Serbia's aid. But Russia, remember, is a member of the Triple Entente, which also includes Britain and France. So now Britain and France are involved too. As if that weren't enough, what group, what alliance is Austria-Hungary a member of? 
Well, the Triple Alliance, of course. So now Germany is involved too. Italy decides to stay neutral. So now within the span of about a month, you have Austria-Hungary, Serbia, Russia, Britain, France, and Germany all embroiled in war, and that is just the start. Alliances mean that all these countries that would not otherwise have been involved are pulled in. This is the beginning of the enormous and deadly war that would come to be known as the Great War. World War I. Thank you. I'll see you next time.